Today we have a special show with a special guest. It's my friend Robert, who I've known for many, many years. And Robert is the voice in one of the jingles that you hear on that indie show in the evenings when I'm live streaming. Uh, Robert is a previous no voter, uh, converted to yes. And we're going to go through his journey of why he thought no was the best option up to today and how he feels and why he's now yes. So let me welcome Robert. How are you today, sir? I'm, I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. It's great to have you here. I really appreciate your time doing this. It means a lot to me. We've been trying to nail down a, a convenient time for the two of us to be able to, to actually hook up over the internet. Um, we've had a, a couple of little technical issues, so hopefully I'll be able to use some... Um, magic to, to make us both sound crystal clear for the podcast eh? <laughs> and yeah so it's great listen introduce yourself tell me a little bit about yourself um you know none of the boring stuff just the interesting stuff you know who you are where you're from and stuff like that on you go robert yeah, tell me yeah my, my name my name's robert and um i'm from edinburgh originally from glasgow but i'm from, i live in edinburgh i've lived in edinburgh for almost all my life went to school here worked here um uh, i do sports journalism for sorry, a few publications um i um well i work in retail and um, beside your good self um, um yeah yeah that's uh, like football like sport like uh, politics like current affairs um just sort of a broad interest in a lot of things really yeah uh, nature walking reading all sorts of different topics that's good. It's it's. Uh, yeah. I find the conversations that we've had outside of work and when our paths have crossed with other things, um, really good. Mm. I I think that you're a very honest man. Um, I mm. feel that you've got like a a positive family dynamic, and you're you're educated because of the the you're well read. Uh, you, mm. you you're good at writing. Your journalism. Um, I've read a a few of your things before. I didn't tell you that, but I've mm. read your stuff. So. It's, I'm proud to know you and call you a friend and a brother, to be perfectly honest. It's good. So let's just jump straight in with the, the mm -hmm. direction that we're going in. It says, you were previously a unionist believing in Westminster and the union as a whole. In mm -hmm. your own words, what made you feel that the union was the correct choice when you voted no? The re well, I, I'm very much a believer in shared principles. And at the time, um, back in 2014, I really felt that the independence movement was quite dissident. And I felt that the union really stood for order. Scotland had contributed to the union for many, many years. We'd built the, the ships that obviously expanded our empire. We you know, played a very significant role in administering and, and managing that empire. Um, and with regards to the union, I really did feel that there was no real hostility um, between Scotland and England um, in terms of trade and business. I felt that we shared a lot of our resources. We worked hard to um, develop new contacts overseas. Um, there was a, I also felt as well that just the, the, the narrative of the yes vote or the yes campaign was all skewed towards um, Alex Salmond and what he wanted and not really putting the needs of Scotland first. I felt there was um, a lot of security in the union and mm -hmm. I felt that there was, you know, Scotland really just, I mean, probably more so for historic hi history and nostalgia, but also the, the feeling that, you know, we we could do a lot more together if we were united. We could do a lot more together um, as part of a shared um, common travel area, sharing the same currency, um, and 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 all, and all different things like that. It just it's it's something that I always felt we we worked better together as a yeah. team, as a group, and I didn't want to see probably at that stage. I didn't want to see it split up. I was aware of the rise of the SNP in the nineties. I remember the the devolution in ninety seven and things mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and the general the Scottish elect the general election when Tony Blair came in. And I always rem just remember, even at that young age, thinking this is a very, very small fringe movement that, you know, I was sceptical of of how it would be able to adapt 
to, yeah. I, I, it came across as a very anti-English movement, and I, I yeah. didn't like that. I, 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 you said some interesting mm-hmm. points there, um, that mm-hmm. you felt that it was a, a dissident movement, the SNP, mm-hmm. it was a separatist thing. It would it probably yeah. caused some anger, maybe down in your soul as well, with, with regards, like, why would they want to, to push, you know, England away, or Britain, separate, you know, Britain apart. I remember the discussions that you and I had about it, um, you know, back then and since then, when when you've gone on this journey to to discover that you would, you know, prefer to be a bit more positive and yes about Scotland, you can mm-hmm. kind of see a bit more. Um, the how did you feel when the results came in on the on the next day from in two thousand fourteen when when people when you know Scotland had decided fifty five percent of the nation had said hey mm-hmm. we're we're going to remain in the UK what what went through your head for that part my my feelings were that really i did not want to see this happen again in the immediate future because i think the scots are very very communal and my initial thoughts were i do not like seeing scott divided against scott i i'm a, I'm a reader of history and you know i've read things about like the jacobite you know risings and yeah, things yeah. like that now that that was a scottish civil war because there was a lot of clans who supported the union and there were a lot of clans who supported the jacobites yeah. and it kind of i don't know why i had these sort of vibes of that i don't there was very similar vibe, like modern day you know, tr- you know transferring it to this whole idea you know transferring mm-hmm. it to this mm-hmm. putting it into this modern context of scott being divided against scott family being divided against family and i felt at the time you know i remember being in inverness a couple of weeks before the referendum and being literally hounded by yes people you know wow. grabbed in the streets and i i i I actually thought you know what they're making a total mockery of themselves because yeah. they cannot tell me what you know, there was no argument about a scottish pound there was no argument about you know what we're going to do with this how we're going to use that what we're going to do with this it was all very much about you know it was it was all really sort of very much about their own self-interest and yeah i, I it, agree it, with you i mean yeah. there was there was a lot of things back then that i was mm-hmm. disappointed as a yes voter i was disappointed with the the the, the lack of uh, dialogue on currency a lack of dialogue yeah. of you know at that time you know we would be out of the eu how do we progress to coming back into the eu uh, there was there was an awful lot of that and i think that you know since then many lessons within the yes movement have have been learned to to progress that dialogue in a more positive way listen the mm. the whole thing of the of 2014 i i don't disagree with you um, there was there was uh, an element of toxicity between both sides, but I would say, in fairness, the the majority of the no movement and the majority of the yes movement did actually push forward in a in a cohesive, positive campaign for each side. I mean, it was like over eighty percent engagement of the the, mm-hmm. the electorate that came out to vote. It was the the greatest voting experience that Scotland ever did ever had Mm -hmm. and that's something we should be proud of triumph of of democracy yeah absolutely and there's no going back now people turn around and say well you don't accept it because you want another one i says i say no um Mm. politics is an evolution it's kind of fluid we we have to Mm -hmm. be able to look at things especially when it's kind of directly outside the political bubble this isn't just politics this is a constitutional issue this is a uh, an ideological issue and it's it's an issue to be able to to make the decisions ourselves and not rely on what's becoming more and more of a pariah state sort of controlling mm-hmm. us down from Westminster that might be a little bit harsh for me to say that because we're we're not up to that part in the the journey yet but I think it's mm-hmm. important that we look at sort of like you know then now and everything in the middle anyway listen mm-hmm. a couple of years passed and we headed into another in-out referendum, this time uh, about remaining or leaving the EU. Uh, Mm -hmm. Were you quite a pro-EU person when you voted no? Yes, yes, I was. Yeah, I and firmly did... believed that you know the the, the United Kingdom um, was much much better, and well, it was called the European Economic Community when they joined yeah. it yeah. in 1973. But I was mm-hmm. um, very much aware that the the Euro question was very much a divisive issue in the Tory Party, and I was 
you know, in the back of my mind, worried that this is going to be thrust upon the Scots who have not voted Tory. Um, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, don't get me wrong, there's been Tory heartlands and there's been Tory votes, but this issue is going to be thrust upon the Scottish people mm -hmm. when our relationship with Europe goes back thousands of years, long before um, um, there was a Scottish Parliament in place. Yeah. And I thought this divisive Tory issue is going to be thrust upon the Scots when really as a Scottish voter, we we don't, you know, it's not something I feel we pay much attention to because our relationship with Europe has always been very harm, harmonious, if you like. Yeah, totally. Um, so so yeah, when yeah. when we were when in two thousand and fourteen, one of the biggest sort of mm -hmm. uh, sort of talking points was, well, if you leave the UK, you'll be forced to, you know, out of the EU, and that that was a fair point. Mm -hmm. And many no voters in Scotland looked upon that as well. You know. We need to we need to stay in the EU and wow we need mm. to vote we need to vote no was it was mm. it, a fa it it was a factor for you is that right is to, to vote no as well yeah and that's fair and many people did that mm -hmm. and do you know something I'll be honest with you mm. I swithered as well but mm -hmm. I looked from my point of view it was the greater good and I knew that uh, mm. eventually we would get back into the EU uh, mm. but the campaign for Brexit when you were looking at that and comparing it to the campaign for a yes no vote i mean i see i saw in 2014 a lot of toxicity from the no side with the the dirty tricks and the scaremongering there was a lot mm -hmm. of that on the the leave side in 2016 as well like oh mm -hmm. look we can uh, have better democracy you know we can take back control and that whole banging on about sovereignty and stuff like that and um, did none mm. of that actually turn around and swither you to think maybe leaving the eu might be a good thing well i mean it, it, i mean i i think that the eu was a very bureaucratic body mm -hmm. um but i also do believe that the only way that you can amend something is by having a seat at the top table yeah um and i think that the the eu has got you know you know, it's 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 a market of well over six hundred million people, and with regards, just very briefly, to the, the Brexit, you know, idea idea. You know, Britain's GDP is only what one point four trillion, compared to Germany and Italy, which have you know, it's probably about five or six trillion. Now, yeah, yeah. If we had a strong economic base in Britain, we had us. You know, we we exported. You know cars we exported chemicals we exported you know we're, we're, we weren't we don't really export a lot and i think if we had a strong economic base that we had prior you know that we, that we had maybe prior mm -hmm. you would argue mm -hmm. to the second world war yeah. or just after the second world war brexit would make a bit more sense to me because we would have that economic clout you know that that of course you know that you know and i i don't think that britain is one of the biggest um economic powers in europe far from it i think that the germans and the italians the french have all got far better economic clout than britain has so i don't yeah. think it's a it's, it's a question of making us stronger i actually think that you know although we are recognized as one of the top 20 um, powers in the world we're, we're certainly not the economic power of europe so you know that that kind of sort of I, you know, I, I couldn't get my head around that. It's like, you yeah, know, we're not, I don't think we've got the clout. I don't think we've got the, the bargaining power to say... And we it, were a smaller just, you know, fish when I, when I, in a bigger ocean, really, yes. weren't we? It was kind yeah, of, um, yeah. we were, in some instances, yeah. we were punching above our weight and relying on the historic clout of of empire, yeah. perhaps. Um, and and yeah. that kind of, that sort of like whole wiggling about there is, is coming to fruition as well. We can see right through that I want to be a big boy sort of attitude mm -hmm. that um, Westminster wants to project. What was it? Global Britain, I believe, was the phrase yeah. used. Um, we're going to be global. But, but you're right. What do we export? There's there's not much mm -hmm. in the way that we do financial services, but that's kind of mm -hmm. beginning to disappear. You know, I mean, companies mm -hmm. like HSBC said, well, do you know something? If, if you leave Europe, we're going to take our headquarters mm -hmm. and move it to France. And they've done that now. You know, yeah. they've they've mm -hmm. moved their headquarters from Great Britain for for Europe into to France now. And mm -hmm. they won't move back into Scotland for that. I mean that's that's not gonna happen. But the funny thing is, Scotland exports a lot more. You know, Scotland mm -hmm. exports more than it imports. 
Uh, we yes. are the most productive nation within the United Kingdom with everything mm. that, that we do. And our, I'm pretty sure that if we were to do a comparison of GDP per population, maybe I'll get uh, James from the live shows that I do on TikTok to to go and look up and draw a comparison. That would be really interesting to do. But long yes. and short of it is, as an individual nation, as an, as an individual independent country, Scotland would be far more successful on its own moving forward rather than being mm. part of the UK. You know, we, we, mm -hmm. we would be able to, to, to forge our way forward. So moving on anyway from all that, yes. um, we went through the campaign for 2016. You were still a no voter. How were you beginning to feel when the vibe was the polls kind of looked? It looked kind of 50-50 again for, yes, sorry, leave and remain. And perhaps mm. maybe slightly swinging towards, at the time, there was it was slightly swinging towards Remain. Um, it yes. wasn't swinging towards Leave. I mean, from my point of view, I voted to Remain. I went to bed that night and I woke up in the morning and the world had utterly changed as a result of that. Correct. I mean, I couldn't believe yes. it. I was like, wow. Yeah. How did you feel when, yeah. when you woke up the next morning and we were, um, uh, the UK had voted out? gobsmacked then listen totally as well okay, totally with, gobsmacked. with the yeah. gobsmacking when they broke down the results and you saw mm -hmm. that scotland had predominantly with 62 percent of people voting to remain yes. how did you mm -hmm. feel right there and then knowing that your fellow scots and potentially a lot of no voters as well had voted mm -hmm. to remain in the eu but we didn't have a choice but to move yes. on as part of the UK. How did you feel? I felt, I, I really did then just begin to feel that this is all being done in the interest of people who are weak, who are don't understand uh, the public conscience in this country. It was all about what they wanted. It was all about lies, um, a lot of other different things. It was from splinter people who were used to be part of the Conservative Party who were as I say, just not acting in the best interests of the country. And it was all um, self, 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 um, what's the word? Self. It was just selfish. Self, it was just selfish. selfish. It was, it yeah. was all mm -hmm. for their own um, gain. And mm -hmm. uh, there was nothing there that was going to, I mean, there, there's nothing that's good that's come of, no. of Brexit at all. Nothing. Absolutely mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. There is no success stories. The success stories that they like to throw about are comical. Um, it has yes. destroyed these islands' economy and the international reputation. I mean, we are just a joke. Not Scotland so much. Mm -hmm. I think we've got quite a mature government, regardless what people think about Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP. Mm -hmm. They are... I had somebody on a, a live for that. When I did the, the march from Johnson Terrace down to Holyrood, uh, I went live on TikTok. It was most... It was actually what pushed me into doing more lives on TikTok that mm -hmm. particular day. I had a thousand people watching from all over the world and I had some union loving folk come on and one of them turned around and said, I would hate to live in a, an independent Scotland under the most corrupt party in the United Kingdom, the SNP. And I just laughed and I says, wow, that, that's an incredible thing to say. Where's your benchmark? Mm -hmm. If your benchmark is, is Westminster, you know, the SNP may not be perfect, but we're like Premier League compared to like Sunday School Corrupt yes. League compared to Westminster. And and yes. that's kind of like where the world is kind of looking on at a once influential government and nation state, okay, and looking and going, what the hell's happened to you? Why why mm -hmm. are you behaving in such a an outrageous way? It's it's like the the fall of Rome. It's like the civilization is mm -hmm. collapsing within within Westminster, it's kind of scary in some things. We need to get out, in my opinion. Um, I, mean, sorry, I, 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 mean, I mean, if you look back as well, we, we really, at the end of the Second World War, wanted to preserve the peace in Europe. I and mean, we were not a yeah. sort of Eurosceptic country. You know, there no. was a lot of people in the Conservative Party just after the war that were advocates of a stronger Europe and Britain playing a huge part in that. And yeah, you just sort totally. of wondered, where have all these ideals gone? Where have all these morals gone? You know, and it was, it just didn't, and as, as I've said to you before, it very much felt like this is being thrust upon us. You know, the, the, what, you know, as a Scot, you know, I'm not, 
I, I accept that there are maybe people that, you know, fishermen and all that, who, you know, in the Northeast, EU quotas for fishing and all that, that, that well, yeah. we can do away with, with all this, you know, we can have our own, take back our own waters and all that. But, you know, when you really think about it, we always had, have had our own waters. We have always had, you know, and the lies that were projected on buses about the NHS and, you know, certain people coming out on the, the um, news bulletins the morning after the results saying, no, I can't guarantee that the NHS will get that money back. It was all just built on deceit and lies. No, I agree with you. It's mm -hmm. um, yep. The campaign was sold as a fraud to many people. Mm -hmm. I mean, when people turn around and say, well, you know, what happened to that $350 million for the NHS? They say that they've given mm -hmm. it to us with consequentials and stuff like that across the whole of the United Kingdom. They may well have mm -hmm. done, but it's made zero impact because... The gains that um, potentially came with Brexit um, are completely outweighed by the losses. The, mm -hmm. the losses are in incredible and it's destroyed like not just the reputation, um, it's destroyed the, the economy, it's destroyed livelihoods, mm -hmm. families, um, people yes. not being able to do things that, that they used to do. Now with the cost of living as well, it's it's affecting all the every single household is touched by Brexit. They like to blame the war in the Ukraine and the energy crisis. Well, mm. the energy crisis is partial to do with the Ukraine, but why do a lot of European countries have less costs than than we do for for that? You know, that's mm. the question I ask all the time. We're paying God at least twice as much in some, if not a, maybe a third as much, um, than places like like France and Germany. I mean, they've got mm -hmm. a, a, a nationalised system in both those countries for for their energy. Why? Why? Are, mm -hmm. Why isn't our government, are the managers of our civilization, why are they not doing something similar to make it easier for us to to do things? To do things. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a lot of borrowing from the the, the pandemic right across Europe. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to pay that back. But it seems mm -hmm. that the the lining of people's pockets with all the, the COVID contracts and things and the writing off of COVID fraud and stuff, it seems that we're paying for that. Why are yes. people angry yeah. about that? You know, that, that drives mm -hmm. me bananas, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. But I digress, I digress. Mm -hmm. let's, let's get back on to topic. So in retrospect, mm -hmm. looking at the 2014 referendum, okay, knowing mm -hmm. the result of Brexit, do you mm -hmm. think you would have still voted no? I would not have voted no if I knew that this was going to happen. Really, that's um, a big no. thing to say there, Robert. It really no is. I would, and and I, 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 I really, honestly feel a sense of betrayal. I feel a sense of you know, you know what 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 really is our place in this so-called union of equals. Um, but, and I think that the it's, it saddens me to a degree. It does sadden me to a degree. All the ideals that I believed were important to the union. Um, it saddens me to a degree that we, we we were betrayed the way we were. It almost drives me to tears, to be honest with you, because I was a very firm believer in the union, a very, very firm believer. And just to see it fragmented, become fragmented. And the other thing as well is that Brexit was made as something that would possibly strengthen the union. There was some argument from Brexit here that this will yeah. strengthen it, and it, it simply hasn't. It's just it's disintegrated into millions of pieces. And... Um, you know, it, it just, it, it, it really, really saddens me. It really saddens me. Yeah, it's so, no, the, the, the yeah. whole betrayal thing, I get that. I've got yeah. other friends mm -hmm. as well that feel pretty much the same as you. They were, they were de mm -hmm. unfortunately, there's still no voters because they can't see the economic mm -hmm. case for Scotland. Hopefully that will change yeah. because um, there, there's no doubt about it that let's 2014 economy compared to uh, 2022 economic case for an independent Scotland is chalk and cheese. Um, yes. People will be able to see through the the frustrations of not having an answer in 2014 yes. compared to now. Um, there's people that still have the blinkers on and say that's that's just not enough information. You're not being able to turn around and give me what I need and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But no, do you know what? It's we're moving on, right? So yeah. let's look. There was um, a little question about the royal family because you're a, a mm -hmm. great believer in the the royal family the question that i mm -hmm. initially had you had for you was involving her majesty the queen and she's yes. passed away now and we all felt that yeah. whether we 
were royalists yeah. or not. You know what um, my opinion is of them. I am quite happy with tradition. I'm, I'm a bit yes. indifferent. I think that if mm -hmm. they need to survive, they need to evolve and modernise. Do we need yes. them in politics? I don't think we do. I think that they can still no. sign the laws for tradition. So for that, I don't have a problem with that. I personally don't think that they should be directly involved with anything to do with the governing of the state. And we, we've had mm -hmm. lots of interesting conversations away from, from recording this about the royal family. Mm -hmm. And you know that none of my stuff is remotely to be offensive. The only thing that no. I'm offended by is um, there was two things about the royal family. And um, I think that it's important to point out the the Queen's consent thing or the King's consent now, which is mm -hmm. to the the sort of like looking at legislation and then lobbying with lawyers and courtesans to be able to say, hey, look, this is going to, we need to change this a little bit. So the one mm -hmm. that really got to me, right, and this is not me mocking the Queen, you know that we've, we've talked about this before, was the Queen's mm -hmm. consent when she was alive was to opt out of Scotland's new environmental legislation. And that was right yes. before COP26 as well. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about that with, with regards to, from a, a, a person that believes in the royal family, yes. the traditions and the history of it all, and with your new modern political view of Scotland becoming independent? <sighs> Well, I didn't feel it was setting a very good example, especially, you know, when the royal family themselves and a lot of members of the royal family have been advocates of green energy and, and um, you know, using renewables and, you know, converting to hydrogen. I know Charles's yeah. views on it very clear. He's made those feelings very clear. From mm -hmm. made those feelings very, very clear for, as Prince of Wales. So that now he's become king. There's not really, we don't really need to ask ourselves, what does Charles feel about the economy, the environment? What does Charles feel about ecology and yeah. biodiversity? Because we know that these, these views have been made public on this. But going back to that, I think that I think they didn't set a very good example um, when the rest of us are being encouraged to do it. And there's obviously like, it felt almost a little bit like a law for them and a law for us. So yeah, um, keeping them out of the whole constitutional debate, um, I, I didn't think that that was a very good example that was, was being set um, by, by the Queen in doing that. Yeah, no, it's, um, mm -hmm. I felt a bit betrayed about that as well. And everything mm -hmm. you said, even though my feelings, you know where my feelings stand on it all, is I'm a bit mm -hmm. indifferent, um, mm -hmm. and all, but I, I kind of, that made me a bit angry. Um, yes. For all the reasons that you just said there, it's like they're supposed yeah. to be elevated to a level of example. Now, I'm not just for mm. anybody that is listening to this that might be a, a hardcore royalist. I'm not mocking the queen. Mm. I'm mocking mm. the sense of tradition that she had the ability to circumvent certain legislation. Um, mm. And then as well, pretty much right after Charles became king, um, it was mm. discovered that uh, he was using King's consent to look at mm. the freezing of rents in Scotland for the properties that he inherited from his mum. And whether mm -hmm. or not mm -hmm. amendments have been made, time will, will tell. Again, I think that's wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that they don't, just because of tradition and things, they, they, they don't have, a, it's not in their place to be able to turn around and decide that that's for them. I think it's wrong. <laughs> Yes. Then, then we've got all the scandals, okay? That and you, we've yeah. talked about this, um, as well in great detail offline, like, um, Prince Andrew and his thing. I'm not going to go into detail. Everybody knows what that's no. about, and it's a bit of a, a yeah. bruise for some people. But mm -hmm. when you're turning round and we're supposed to be an example, um, of 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 good behaviour, and then mm -hmm. this comes to the public eye. And then there's also mm -hmm. the things with Prince William and, and his life choices as well. But I'm not judging Prince William. He can do what he likes. I'll judge Prince mm -hmm. Andrew because that's mm -hmm. potentially criminal. Potentially, I'm saying, mm -hmm. because there was the, the out-of-court settlement of millions of pounds or dollars. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you've never met a woman, if you've never met somebody or anything like that at all, why would you pay that sort yeah. of money? And the, the reason I'm bringing this up is... Where do I feel and you feel the, the royal family sits in an independent Scotland? I think mm -hmm. that they could, would they be head of state 
figuratively mm-hmm. they, they might well be um mm-hmm. and you and i have had discussions that perhaps maybe it won't be our generation or even my son's generation that will make the decision upon the royal family yes i reckon it will be my grandchildren's generation and you know what things might have changed they might have evolved into a positive direction they might have mm-hmm. uh, ended up being um worse and you never know there might be a referendum to to throw them out many people want that many people want to keep them but from mm-hmm. from our point of view just now it's like I, I don't think that it should be part of the constitutional debate for scottish independence i think that's the mm-hmm. wrong thing to do i think we need to obtain our independence and then look at changing scotland's political and constitutional landscape afterwards yes. i think that's a sensible yes. thing to do Okay, so mm-hmm. we're, we've pretty much got to everything we want to talk about, um, except mm-hmm. now. Now, mm-hmm. um, present day Great Britain. In fact, let's just remove mm-hmm. the great, okay, and just call it present day Britain. Because mm-hmm. we are now in a position where uh, we had Boris Johnson as a prime minister. He came in initially as an unelected prime minister through the Tory party leadership campaign back in 2019. Mm -hmm. So he was thrust upon us as a leader. Was he charismatic? Absolutely. Did I believe in his charisma? I know I thought it was slimy and awful, to be perfectly honest. I thought it was like pathetic, a Mm schoolboyish, you know, sixth form prefect in the common room sort of attitude towards Mm -hmm. everything. Um, We then Mm -hmm. had a, a, a general election in 2019 and he ended up with 80 Tory MP majority. Um, yes, yes. And, the, and the I red think as well, was broken, this is the whole, you know? yeah. Mm. Brexit is a dysfunctional, it's Brexit is dysfunctional. So if you have Brexit, you get dysfunctional leaders. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I agree with that. You know, the, it's a dysfunctional thing, yeah. path that the country is following. So if you get, if you have, if you choose to, if you choose to have that dysfunctional, um, um, if you have, if you choose to have a dysfunctional thing such as Brexit, you're going get, to get, going to get dysfunctional politics. No, I, t- I totally agree. Yeah. There's there's nothing mm. wrong with anything that you're saying there just now at all. Mm. Um, mm. And he was he he was just elected on one simple slogan of "Get Brexit Done." That was his yeah. plebiscite, one policy party in the 2019 election, and nobody mm. can deny that that was the case. You know, there was obviously peripherals coming off that, like, well, you know, we'll get Brexit done. Mm. And, We'll make Britain great again, you know. We should have had mm-hmm. like a, uh, what was, we should have a not a MAGA hat. What would it be? Make Britain M B G A. That there's going to be some sort of acronym I can make up from that called Gaga or something like that. There's going to be something. Mm-hmm. I'll find something. But I felt that um, again, you know, people were swept up in the moment of not understanding what they were voting for. Um, mm-hmm. into the 2019 that he was given a mandate to do whatever he wanted mm-hmm. uh, with regards to um, running the UK. And he, he came, he, I think he was wanting to be a rock star politician. He mm-hmm. kind of like didn't mm-hmm. give a hoot. Then he walked straight into the pandemic, which he didn't believe. And he did all that sort of like press conference of mm-hmm. visiting a hospital where he was going going around shaking everybody's hand, made it perfectly clear at the press conference, mm-hmm. yes, 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 I shake everybody's hand, yes, and it, nothing to be afraid of here. Mm-hmm. And then the, the medical officer next to him, his chief medical officer, was like, yeah, don't shake hands, just go and wash them, sort of attitude. Mm-hmm. Two weeks later, <laughs> he had COVID, you know? So yes, yeah. I don't think he took it seriously. I didn't think that, um, that it was the the most positive thing to do uh he didn't Mm -hmm. as far as i'm concerned you know eventually he made the right decisions but Mm -hmm. again we we had a leader that that basically was not great for scotland i mean nicola sturgeon Mm -hmm. did the best she could with the powers that she had Uh, Mm -hmm. but you know it if we wanted to remain locked down we weren't getting the money Mm -hmm. to to keep people in furlough we we had to do what Mm -hmm. england wanted you know that that was it and when yes. I say England, I mean Westminster. I don't want people to to consider that I'm being mm-hmm. anti-English here. Um, mm-hmm. Eventually, scandal after scandal and uh, a narcissist point of view from mm-hmm. Boris Johnson led him to be thrown out. I mean, I, we could do mm-hmm. a show directly on 
the the life and times of Boris Johnson and you know what everybody mm-hmm. knows. We don't need to go yeah. through the guy. The guy was plainly yeah. completely incompetent. But yeah. this is me just summing up to where we are just now. We then had a what was it a ten week leadership campaign during the summer. Wow. Mm-hmm. I got a migraine listening to that on the news a lot of the yes, time, and I know. they yeah. ended up bashing the living daylights out of Scotland and Nicola Sturgeon. You know, best way to deal with her is to ignore her. Um, yeah. Rishi Sunak saying, you know, yes, of course, I believe that this is a voluntary union, but it's mm-hmm. uh, you're not getting a vote, sort of thing. This is now's not the time. That old chestnut, and then yes. we had the forty-two days of trust where she virtually destroyed. Mm-hmm. The UK economy. I mean, literally, in one day. <laughs> in, in one day. Well, I, I mean, yeah. that's just abysmal. And now we've got mm-hmm. Rishi, Rishi Sunak, the billionaire mm-hmm. oligarch prime minister. You know, mm-hmm. he is yes. more out of touch than every other prime minister, in my opinion, put together. Mm-hmm. His heating bill for his uh, swimming pool is greater mm-hmm. than your energy costs, my energy costs, and probably about a dozen Mm -hmm. other people's energy costs put together. He hasn't a Mm -hmm. clue what we're feeling. You know, he's he's making these big decisions on a a name plaque called Great Britain and not considering the people. He's considering the bankers Mm -hmm. and the the markets more. Also as well, you you were talking about obviously Liz Truss Mm -hmm. saying that Nicola, she felt Nicola Sturgeon was just an irrelevance and the best thing to do is ignore her. You can, that kind of just, that's a sort of microcosm really for how they view us in general, I believe. You know, we are just an afterthought. (laughs) Absolutely. No, I agree with you there. It's like us, just Mm -hmm. those pesky Scots. What's wrong with Scotland uh, is it's full of Scots, you know, it's it's outrageous. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when when you look at the the bigger picture, they don't want to let go of us for the simple mm-hmm. reasons that we are an economic powerhouse. Yes. And anybody that if you boil it down to why they don't want us to go, they talk about us mm-hmm. being a drain. They talk about ignoring Scotland. They talk about you know leveling up. Even the other day there in the the Commons, um, mm-hmm. our our reappointed wonderful as it alistair jack is back being the yes. the secretary of state for scotland he, he kind of turned around and started to mock the snp saying your snp councils are applying to this leveling up fund and the snp response yeah. was why shouldn't they you know yeah. mm-hmm. they're entitled to this money because it's mm-hmm. part of the scottish taxation system we we have this massive toxicity towards scotland like we're a drain on their society and um, many many of our brothers and sisters south of the border see that they're paying for the things that we we do well with up here but I, I don't think they understand is that we send all of our taxation to the treasury and then there's this amazing thing called the barnet formula and you know mm. what we might get more per head of population in scotland um, mm-hmm. from the Barnet formula, but we still don't get back everything that we put in. The remaining mm-hmm. amount always is spent on our behalf, but mm-hmm. we end up with this resentment, a, a resentful feeling from our brothers and sisters down south that we're getting more per head of population than, mm-hmm. than anything else. And I, I find that that is something that comes across in Westminster, the ungrateful Scots. So mm-hmm. where I was leading up to is in summing up you were a no voter because you believed in the cohesion and the strength of the union and all the positive things that that brought to the world the the great Mm. message and everything you felt a bit betrayed and let down by by brexit and um, in retrospect you would look back and think maybe you know voting no wasn't the right thing in 2014 with everything that's happened um going forward from brexit the the whole campaign and eventually the the leaving of the european union the the collapse of certain industries and now with the the different leaders that we've had in the past sort of like four months here in in britain Mm -hmm. where do you stand now do you feel that the this you know that you want to to push harder for independence do you feel that can we do better on our own where where do you where's your your beliefs in in scotland now 
my beliefs are that we are more than capable of of, of holding our own. We we have enormous economic potential. Um, I believe that you know I don't like. I mean, I, listen, don't get me wrong. I don't like to you know that there's a lot of independence people that go look at Norway, look at Denmark, and that's that's fine. Don't get me wrong, but I just prefer to look at us without comparison, and I just look at what we've got resource-wise, what we've got technical-wise. Um, we're very egalitarian. We're, we're very um, um, social progressive democracy, if you like, in Scotland. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're always a bit more of a left-leaning country, but I just think that there's enormous potential um, in Scotland that could be unleashed on the world um, economically, politically, and socially. And um, there's absolutely no doubt. I feel that if we were part of a, a, a good a, a trading block of over 600 million people, um, we would be we would we would we would absolutely thrive in it. And um, this is where I'm you know I'm I'm concerned because I don't think that there's any remote chance in the near future of the UK reapplying to rejoin the European Union. And um, no, I agree. You know that you know it's they, they it's they obviously are just they're afraid of like a federalist European state or not enough you know just a you know a, a European state that's going to swallow them up and um, um, I, the EU is not perfect but the only way you can amend it is by you know having that voice at the top table and being able to. to um, plot a, a better path and a better future for it. And I think that if, uh, if Scotland was able to do that as part of, you know, all the other countries, then I think that would be, that would be great. That's amazing. What a great thing to yeah. say. Um, mm -hmm. It really, really is. And listen, that's what I think mm -hmm. we will end it on that positive high. Mm -hmm. I, I want to, to take my time to, to thank you, Robert, because I know that you've been mm -hmm. on a very emotional journey right the way through mm -hmm. from 2014 to, to now mm -hmm. uh, with Brexit and Her Majesty passing as well. I know that you felt that deeply. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, and I know that perhaps maybe with the questions that you asked about that time, um, mm -hmm. that maybe maybe even swithered a little bit. I know that your heart was in understanding for for being independent and things, but... There was there was mm -hmm. other friends of ours that suddenly went from yes to going back to being no, but now that yeah. the, you know the the razzmatazz and the the mourning period and all the the new stuff with the royal families kind of dissipated. The, the, our mutual friends, I think you know who I'm talking about. I'm going to name no names. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. He he is now very much firmly planted back in the yes camp. I can understand why mm -hmm. people might have felt you know a bit nostalgic for everything, but do you know mm -hmm. something. You're a good man with a good head on your shoulders and you're the epitome of change in Scotland. You, you should mm. be held as an example of a, a positive viewpoint and optimism. You know, you can, mm. you can see through rhetoric and nostalgia and as much as you love the history of, of Union, you can also mm. see how yeah. Scotland can forge ahead and create a new, more positive history, making its own yes. decisions. So listen... That's exactly it. Yeah, thank you so much for your time today. I'm so glad we finally managed to nail this down. And I want to, any time that you feel that you want to to come on and involve yourself in any of the lives that we do, there's my little shows, and then there's all the lives that I join with the the little group of friends that I've got on there as well for in, engaging and stuff. So, um, if you see me live on somebody else's one, follow them because yeah. they're very mm. good indie folk. That's like. Um, it's McVeigh Artist um, mm -hmm. for that. You've got Indie Ref James, Indie Ref Kate, Cat, I think. You've got, there's Bobby, yes. there's um, Connie and Craig. There's a whole bunch of really good folk on TikTok that are worth following and listening to mm -hmm. and inserting yourself into the conversation in the comments. And if mm -hmm. I'm certainly on and there's a space in the box, I would I would invite you on. Um, I don't know whether you've got enough mm. followers to come on. We might need to get you a thousand followers first, but you know I'll something. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'll make you a couple of videos saying I need a thousand followers, and we'll get there. But listen, thank you very much for your time, um, no and that's great. Um, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure to take part, and all the best going forward with the Saltire because it's a progressive channel, and it's it's it really has opened my eyes. It really has, and um, just the feeling as well that you know. Also, just very briefly, you know, when we go back to 2014, a feeling as well of this issue hasn't been resolved. 
yeah you know that was another feeling that i had at the time that um this this issue won't go away it is a fight for for scotland's future we can't we won't go quietly into the night we have a chance to have a say on our own affairs and how we're governed and you know just you know just a more a, more, a scotland with so much potential and so much um um vibrance about it you know we can we can really push forward as an independent country and and have our own say in the world and that's that's what i believe in now yeah i mean it's not through it's not been through people pushing me into thinking it it's just i've had time to look at the situation over the last few years in british politics and realize that you know we are the you know that that union that i once loved and loved being part of and cherished being part of just doesn't really exist now you know it's it's a totally different format it's a totally different new union that i think is very dangerous and um very dysfunctional <laughs> you're not wrong you're definitely yeah, not yeah. wrong um mm. hang around we'll have a wee chat after i've signed off from yeah. the recording thing um yeah. but listen I, I, you have no idea how long i've waited to get you nailed down to tell your story mm. and i'm not disappointed and i hope everybody that's mm. listening to this uh, feels a bit inspi inspired with what what Robert has said, especially if you're still swithering between yes and no. Um, there's not anything unfactual here. A lot of it was emotional. A lot of it was um, personal truths, and then truths that we recognise with you know observing it and experiencing it over the past eight years as well. So, mm -hmm. Robert, thanks again, and uh, right, we will uh, chat again sometime. Thank you so much. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Bye-bye. My name's Robert, and I have a question for you. Are you yes yet? Yeah?